good morning dear students so today in science 2 we shall study chapter number 16 hereditary and variation in this chapter we will be studying about inheritance hereditary characteristics and their appearance mendel's laws of inheritance diseases due to chromosomal aberrations so let's go to think about it first question do all the boys and girls of your class look alike second question think about the following characteristics and note similarities and differences so here you can write down your own characteristics personal characteristics here your own your grandfather grandmother father and mother so the first characteristic is color of the skin so your own color your grandfather grandmother father and mother shape of the face whether round or oblong oblong is long face then height of each one of you color of the eyes orientation of the thumb how you can rotate your thumb move your thumb okay so here you include everything write it fill in this boxes and note down the differences now earlier we have seen that there is a great variation variation means differences or variety within each species in nature in this chapter we shall study the factors that give rise to these variations inheritance the branch of biology which studies the transfer of characteristics of organisms from one generation to the next and the genes in particular is called genetics so please underline this definition of genetics and study it i shall read it again what do you mean by inheritance the branch of biology which studies the transfer of characteristics of organisms from one generation to the next and the genes in particular is called as inheritance so uh, genetics so you have to study this definition okay now next new progeny that is a young one progeny means the young one is formed through the process of reproduction except for a few minor differences the offspring shows great similarities with parents organisms produced by the asexual reproduction show minor variations that is differences minor means few or less however offsprings produced through sexual reproduction show comparatively greater variations now let us observe these figures here given in table 6.16.1 some differences in the facial features now carefully observe your classmates ear lobes irrespective see some of the ear lobes are attached and some are loose irrespective of all of us being humans what differences do you notice in the skin color all of you are in standard 9th why then are some students tall and some short so in this table you can see the facial features okay the nose and the lips are different of each one of us the hairline is different but why is this occurring so let us study why this happens so let's go to the next page heredity the transfer of characteristics from parents to offspring is called heredity now learn this definition it is due to these hereditary that puppies are similar to dogs squabs are similar to pigeons squabs means the young one of pigeons and infants are similar to humans now inherited traits and expression of traits now how do specific traits or characteristics appear in organisms traits means characteristics now can you tell though there are many similarities between parents and their offspring there are some differences too these similarities and differences are all the effect of heredity let us study the mechanism of heredity information necessary for protein synthesis in the cell is stored in the dna the segment of dna which contains all the information for the synthesis of a particular protein is called the gene for that protein okay so the gene is very important 
it is necessary to know the relationship of these proteins with the characteristics of organisms to understand the concept of heredity let us consider the characteristics of plant height we know that there are growth hormones in plants increase in the height of plants depends upon the quantity of growth hormones the quantity of growth hormones produced by a plant depends upon the efficiency of the concerned uh, enzyme efficient enzymes produce a greater quantity of hormone due to which the plant uh, the height of the plant increases however if the enzymes are less efficient a small quantity of hormone is produced leading to a stunting of the plant stunting means short or dwarf plant stunted growth we say so i hope you have understood this inherited traits and expression of traits now let us learn the concept of chromosomes now you can see the picture 16.2 organization of the chromosome chromosomes the structure in the nucleus of the cells that carries out hereditary characteristics is called a chromo called the chromosome so def definition of chromosome learn it again i shall read it the structure in the nucleus of the cells that carries the hereditary characteristics is called the chromosome it is mainly made up of nucleic acids and chrom proteins during cell division chromosomes can be clearly seen under the compound microscope genes which contain the information about hereditary characteristics in coded form are located on chromosomes each species has a specific number of chromosomes each chromosome is made up of dna and it appears dumbbell shaped midway during cell division there is a constricted region in each chromosome it is called as the primary constriction or the centromere you can see in the picture where it is constricted at the center this divides the chromosome into two parts each part is called as the arm the centromere has a specific position in each chromosome depending upon this there are four types of chromosomes so you can see here in the picture 16.2 p arm q arm the dna the arms of the chromosomes its shape now types of chromosomes find out number of chromosomes in different organisms is deleted okay so that is deleted now let us go to the next page types of chromosomes can easily be identified during cell division now chromosome number of some of the organisms has been given in the following table so i'll just read that first crab 200 chromosomes maize 20 frog 26 round worm 4 potato 48 human 46 now first one type of chromosomes metacentric the first one you can see the centromere is exactly at the midpoint okay the centromere is exactly at the midpoint of the chromosome and therefore this chromosome looks like the english letter v the arms of this chromosome are equal in length okay so the first one second submetacentric the centromere is somewhere near the midpoint it is somewhere near the midpoint in this chromosome which therefore looks like the english letter l one arm is slightly shorter than the other okay observe it now next the third one acrocentric chromosome this chromosome is near one end of the chromosome okay looks like letter j english letter j one arm is much smaller than the other last one is telocentric the centromere year is at the end of the chromosome okay making the chromosome look like the english letter i this chromosome consists of only one arm generally in somatic cells chromosomes are in pairs if the pair consists of similar chromosomes by shape and organ orga organization they are called as homologous chromosomes if they are not similar they are called as heterologous chromosomes hetero means different homo means same in case of organisms that reproduce sexually 
one of the chromosome pairs is different from all others. Chromosomes of this different pair are called as sex chromosomes or allosomes. And all other chromosomes are called as autosomes. So I hope you have followed these different types of chromosomes. Now let us watch a video on the different structures of the chromosome, the structure of the chromosome. Asked to fit a thread of one meter in this small box. It will be easy if we simply coil the thread and place it inside. Did you know that a similar approach is taken by our cells? Let's see how. We know that the long stretch of DNA is coiled to a great extent to fit inside the tiny nucleus. This process of coiling gives rise to the chromatid structure. It's a thread-like mesh that we find in the nucleus of a metabolically active cell. The chromatids gain a typical classical structure which looks somewhat like this. It's seen during cell division. And these are nothing but the chromosomes. But tell me, do all chromosomes look exactly like this? Do all the 46 chromosomes look the same? If yes, then why do we say that there are 23 pairs of chromosomes? What helps us categorize these chromosomes as pairs? Well, all chromosomes are not exactly like one another. They come in types depending upon their structure or shapes and functions. The first basis for classification is shapes. We know this is the structure of a typical chromosome. And is this a single chromosome? That's right. The difference is that this chromosome is not duplicated, while this one has a duplicated copy attached to itself. So these are the duplicated sister chromatids which are attached to the same chromosome. Now to understand the types, let's first understand the typical structure. Here, these two regions are called the arms of the chromosome. This arm is named as the P arm and this is known as the Q arm. So how do we recognize which is the P and which is the Q arm? Is it based on their positions? Nope, it depends on the size. The smaller arm is the P arm while the larger one is the Q arm. So this chromosome has one P and one Q arm while this one has two P and two Q arms. Now let's focus on this chromosome structure. Can you guess what the structure is called to which the arms are attached? Well, this knot-like structure is called centromere. It's the portion of DNA that acts as a link between the two sister chromatids. But that's not its sole purpose. Its major function is the attachment of spindle fibers during the cell division process. And let me tell you one more interesting use of the centromere. It's the position of the centromere that helps us categorize the chromosomes into four types. The four types include metacentric, submetacentric, acrocentric and telocentric chromosomes. Let's have a look at the structures of each type. Aren't these simple to understand? This one is called metacentric type. As we can see, the centromere is placed almost exactly at the center. The two arms seem almost of the same length. We can say that the centromere is placed somewhat in the middle of the complete structure. Now the next type is the submetacentric. Here the centromere is placed slightly away from the center. As a result, the two arms of the chromosome appear unequal. The next type is the acrocentric. In this, the centromere is seen almost towards the end region. The term acro in Greek relates to peak. Thus, the name acrocentric refers to the type where the centromere is near the terminal region. Lastly, what we see is that the centromere is present at the extreme end. That is, the centromere is placed at the telomeric region. Hence the name telocentric. However, these chromosomes are not found in humans. The human karyotype lacks telocentric chromosomes. But what is karyotype, you may ask? Well, it's one way of representing all the chromosomes found in a cell. 
This is how chromosomes are classified on the basis of their structures or shapes to be precise. Now let's have a look at the other type of classification. This is a much simpler type of classification. Here, the chromosomes are classified whether they are autosomes or sex chromosomes. Now what could these be? This is a representative image of a typical human karyotype. The chromosomes that pair from 1 to 22nd are called autosomes. That is, they are not the sex chromosomes. To be precise, they have got no function to deal with the sex of the individual. The last pair, however, determines the sex of the person. So if the two are identical, that is, both are X and X, then the individual is a female. And what if both are different? In such a case, when one chromosome is X and the other is Y, the individual is a male. This pair is the sex chromosomes. So the chromosomes which help in determining the sex of an individual are sex chromosomes or even called allosomes. The others which are from first to the 22nd pair are not the sex chromosomes. This makes them the autosomes. Both contain genes that code for proteins which make up our body. Now that we've understood the various types of chromosomes, can you tell me 